Welcome back to the Titanium Hangout. This is Mike, and I'm coming at you with the weekly news in review for April 14th, 2024, 2024. And it's been a relatively light or soft week of news, but the news that has come out has packed a punch and caused lots of concern. So we're going to get into talking about all of these stories today. Of course, Transformers, Masterpiece, Legends, Mainline. There's a Target Holothon. Not a whole lot to talk about. I'll cover it and give you my thoughts, but it seems like it's pretty effective pretty decent anyway this wasn't effective or decent for target and i've got lots of thoughts and lots of things to say on this almost want to make a whole video about it but i won't i'll just cover it here and then we have got ramen toy update just uh found out some approximate release dates expectations for a few of the projects that i'm most interested in and then star wars there is some star wars news it's a little bit of star wars news and it's interesting stuff going on, but we'll talk about that and more coming up. All right, starting out, what is new at Show Z Store? This is the Magic Square MSB 4D6A Light of Victory repaint version. So it's almost exactly what I was looking for. I'm going to give this one a shot. I haven't picked one up yet. The prices from the previous ones range anywhere from 50 bucks to 97. I'm kind of hoping it's closer to the 50 bucks, but with the paint, probably 60. But I think this is what I want. This is the one I'm looking for because it should be painted and we'll find that out. The only thing is I did kind of want this version in the white legs, not the silver legs, but I'll take it. I'll take what I can get and will it have the paint that I want? I hope. One dollar down pre-order right now. Says it should be out later this month. They're also reissuing the fourth party MP51 RC. Now, I actually don't know 100% if this is the same one just getting another run or they're just getting more stock or if this is another company taking a stab at it, but it's $55 for it and it should have the chest lift included. Yeah, chest lifted. They also have this uh, Metagate M01T Huge Fire Optimus Prime, 40 bucks. This is a Bumblebee movie, Optimus Prime, but it's clear. I'm on the fence. I might be getting this. It's pretty cool looking. But they've made others in the past. This is the fourth or fifth iteration that they made. Looks like a pretty cool one. All right, so starting out with the biggest news, or maybe the second biggest news of the week, we do have the Viper, not the Window Viper, but the Viper for an arm for fans toys and it looks pretty good uh, i don't like the lower leg kibble from the wings but I, i'm hoping that the fact that that's there makes it a simplified transformation but is there a, a way to remove those it almost looks like you can possibly but nobody really knows yet it's speculation i think it looks like a great looking bot overall and the backpack when we get to seeing that looks fantastic i fans toys tastic Fans toys tastic. The other backpacks were not as symmetrical and didn't look quite right. This does it, and it has to do it because it is an arm. That's kind of why they went that route. But I think it looks good. Alt mode looks good. And yeah, another great release. I probably won't do mine in combined mode, but let's look at combined mode. The first ever arm tease, and there it is. And he's teasing the arm. Well, actually, you get to see the arm. They tease you with everything else coming up now the arm looks solid again not sure if we'd be able to pop those wings off that's the way i have my zeta displayed without the wings on i think it looks better it's in my opinion but options are good if you can use them but look how they don't show you the whole they give you teases of oh there's the thigh you can see a little bit of the thigh a little bit of the waist and and i know they put pictures out in the past but there's still question if those are renders or the real thing but yeah, this looks really good, really solid. Is it worth the wait? That's the next step. And then this is the one that's going to be like 200 The next one's going to be 400 But the next big news of the week is this MPG-09 and the MP-60. We got better pictures. We can see more of this. But this is not what's got people concerned. We'll talk about that after we look at these pictures real quick. I think they look great. Uh, not knowing the size or scale or any of that kind of stuff just yet. Assuming because it does say masterpiece scale, I assume... And, you know, you could get that wrong, but assuming that it will be taller than MP44 when it's all combined, not sure if the standard bot would be as tall as MP44, but in my mind, it should be. In my mind, the MP60 needs to be the same height as 
MP44. I always thought that the MPG or the direction Takara was going was simplification. And these do look simplified. This is a very nice looking, although it's clean, it's and it's probably real simple. The transformation's not mind blowing. And I really thought that the Trailbreaker was a pretty decent transformation. It's a pretty good figure overall. Which uh, don't need to reveal all that just yet, but yeah, it looks pretty good. Then uh, here is the combined mode with the Power Master in there. To me, it's Power Master. I don't really care about the Jinrai talk about it. I, I'm all about the Power Master. And I will be comparing it to a Power Master. And then here's the base. And it's got the base. And it's more of one of those it has to be included. But we never saw this in U.S. continuity. But it was the Japanese continuity, I guess, based on that picture right there. And this is everything it comes with. And it looks it looks great. I mean, it's, it's fine with me. And I've got both of these. I was... I was only going to order one, but I went ahead and decided to order pre-order both because it's just uh, it's going to be one of those big releases where everybody's in on and uh, everyone wants to celebrate it. Now, this picture here caused some concern because it got translated over, and once you got to the translation, the translation says the masterpiece series will end with this work, with the release of the hundredth model, and from now on, the top Transformers brand will be unified to the next generation top brand. Transformers MPG and people are concerned about that unified and that the MPG people are also concerned because I have no interest in those train bots mostly because of the way they looked and they were destroyed by Moon Studio just did a way better job in the bot mode and with all of that if that's the direction this line's going it, it's not a masterpiece line but it could still be the masterpiece line and that made together I don't know. Nobody really knows what's going on with this, and it may be lost in translation too. It might not make any sense to us now, but if it when explained properly, it'll make a lot of sense. But people are concerned. Like we're not going to get Jazz. They're concerned we're not going to get uh, a lot of these other characters that Takara has yet to tackle, and we will be counting on Fan Six Transbots MMC and all of those. Uh, and now we've got Star Toys stepping up and DX9 back in the game. And you know what? That might be why DX9 is resurrected. That might be why all these other companies are stepping into the game. Who knows? Speaking of other companies stepping into the game, I think TransArt does great work. I'm, gonna, I'm working on a review right now for TransArt uh, Skateboard Gorilla, which is an old release that's reissued. It looks good. And I'm right in this zone here with the Transmetal figures. And I never had this figure back in the day. And I, it wasn't my favorite version of Dinobot, obviously, but he is cool looking and I do have him pre-ordered. So I will be picking this guy up, check him out. Here he is with, I think this is mostly done here with the back metals in it. It's uh, It's got some paint on it, it looks like, but he's much bigger than the original Dinobot and the original Masterpiece Dinobot. So that does look pretty cool. It's pretty interesting, the direction that TransArt's going with all of this. And then we got another picture. This is... a like reverting back here's his alt mode so you only have this uh weird prototype this strange color prototype that whatever color they had they injected and there is the alt mode but it's not a bad alt mode it just really does look like the transmetal again this wasn't my favorite version of them but i still think it's cool it's getting made and i'm definitely picking it up so this is a look at the takara karakuri statue Optimus prime and it's for the 100th anniversary that's what they're saying, 100th anniversary, whatever. It looks pretty interesting. It's due out spring of 25 in Japan between March and May. Still no price on it yet. And I still don't, I know we've seen this in the past, but I'm not sure the height or size of it. And it does look pretty cool. And it does have two modes. This was, I think, the original picture that we saw. The It's a statue, but it does transform is the expectation I think we have here. Anyway, it's still kind of cool. It's kind of interesting updates on this project and it might be fun it might be fun it might be like a, a semi mini robosin kind of deal speaking of robosin they're supposed to be announcing their megatron it looks like in on april 25th so that's coming up here in about 12 13 days 11 days countdown 11 a.m if you're interested in this and uh i haven't never picked up any of these robosins they look cool it's interesting it's really expensive but I, i'm guessing it's going to turn into a tank Probably not going to turn into a gun. Sadly. Or it might not even turn into anything. It actually might just be uh, a Megatron that walks and talks. And looks pretty G1. That might be it. But who knows? I guess we'll find out on that fan stream. 
So it looks like Hank Toys is coming out with the CT01X purple version, which is furious purple and looks pretty interesting. It's repainted one of the ones they've done before and it looks great in purple if uh, you're into this stuff. And I don't have the information just yet how many they're going to make in this color scheme and how far this is going to go, what all they're going to be doing with this. So we've already seen a golden set, now this purple one. Will they do the whole thing again in purple? Ah, actually, they might. So that's it for pretty much the masterpiece news, but let's transition into Legends and stay with purple, though. Let's keep it with purple. And we have this here. This is the Robot Toys RTO2 Tyrant. Their take on a Megatron, which is going to be a little bit stylized. Still looks pretty cool to me. And there's not much Legends Beast Wars out there, so this is exciting Beast Wars collectors and other collectors like but this shows the packaging of it so it's in production should be coming pretty soon i just got the the gorilla and it was pretty good the Optimus primal it's a pretty solid there's a lot of they packed a lot of detail into it a lot of things i didn't expect and they did a really good job with that so i now i'm expecting they're going to do a whole lot of crazy stuff with this too that's pretty awesome for being so small very interesting look at that little purple gun they include too I mean, Grimlock needs some attention. Uh, yeah, there's Grimlock. Looking pretty good. Magic Square. I would actually rather have a Toy Deco, an EX Deco, if they redo it down the road. But Magic Square is not like New Age. You have no clue what's happening. Once it's released, you may never see it again for a long time. So, jump on it. So I probably will pick one up, just because I do like Magic Square's designs. And just kind of see the direction they're going with it. And and then after that, wait for EXs. But it looks like they don't need a, a leg filler panel. It's all engineered in. So that's a good plus versus New Age. But man, New Age's paint is really going to hard, hard for Magic Square to beat the presentation on the New Age one. It is going to be hard. But we'll see. And I'll give it a shot. So dx 9s put out more pictures this week of their... God John Rai or their Power Master Optimus Prime. And I think it looks great. It's legend scale. It looks good. It's it's pretty much what you would need. There's no legend scale version of this by any other company. That's the other thing about DX9. DX9's coming out the gate with figures that no one else is making for your legend scale. And that's exactly what companies should do. By the way, I have a repaint of this double dealer. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing that sometime this week, but they're already coming out with a repaint. So that's starting to make me wonder, should we get the first one or wait for a repaint? Or is that repaint a one-off because it's triple changer? I don't know. I don't know. But we'll be talking about that in the future. And then here is just another straight up shot of the figure. And it seems kind of strange. Like DX9 at the exact same time is coming out with Masterpiece again. And then they're making this figure alongside the same time frame Takara's making theirs. Really strange. Isn't it strange? It, it's, it's strange. Hey, they look good. So this isn't really Legends, but I'm going to put it in Legends. This is the Soundmaster and the Monitor, the DWE-02D and e, oh, E-160. So I guess these are Battle Damage. In case you missed them the first time, you can get them. These are sub-Legends. They're smaller but I think the cool part about them is the ability to get them and convert them into the boombox mode. So you can put them with your masterpiece shelf, maybe on your legend shelf, and you know they transform, which is kind of a fun little cool gimmick thing to know that, that it's not just, just an accessory. It actually transforms. In my mind, that's kind of cool. I might pick them up. New Age is back to their repeat game of putting out the same characters in different colors. So this is the New Age H58B Road Games Huffer and Scorer Pipes 2-pack, but they're repaints. They're B repaints. And the B team here. So I, I'm not sure why people want these repaints. I'm curious. Are there are very many people out there that want these repaints? I think they nailed it, giving you Huffer and Pipes the first go-around, and then now we've got these repaints of them. But... They look cool, they look interesting, and we'll see what comes of them when they arrive. Because I've got the first set pre-ordered. So I guess that's it for the Legends. We're getting into Masterpiece. Mainline, Hasbro stuff. This is the 
Legacy United Deluxe already sideburn, and there he is. Now, I'm guessing because somebody, uh, Prime vs. Prime's got his hands on it, they should start showing up in your store pretty soon, like tomorrow, right? So that, they should be coming pretty soon. But here is a picture of the alt mode, if you're interested in it. And it's uh, smaller than the gears, so yeah, it seems to scale pretty accurately if you're interested in that. So there it goes, Cyburn. All right, so Transformers. 40th Anniversary Exhibition in Japan announces an exclusive Studio Series EX Bumblebee clear yellow version revealed, and it will be uh, on their website for... I think actually this Bumblebee is only going to be during the event itself, but that's going to be happening on May 10th, June to June 3rd. Obviously, I won't be there for it, and if you're interested in this clear one, you're going to have to try to find alternate ways to get it, but... Still looks pretty cool, pretty interesting, and I do kind of like the clear stuff. These days, I'm starting to gain an affinity to it. Looks really cool. If you're interested in this version of a Bumblebee, clear. Now, Earthrise Optimus Prime and Gamer Edition Optimus Prime are getting reissued. They should be up for pre-order at places now, like all the regular cast characters. TF Source, Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Store, Robot Kingdom, Chosen Prime, Ages 3 and Up, and Amazon, theoretically. But... Do you remember when Ollie's had that Earthrise Optimus Prime for 25 bucks? I mean, I, I remember that. Clear as a bell. I remember them lasting for like a week, too. They got a grip of them. So, uh, odd that they're reissuing them. But then again, it's the last gasp at that mold before they give us a new one, right? Right? So, we got pictures of merchandise. Some merch. Transformers 1, Popcorn Bucket Cup, and some other stuff that's going on in here. From TGMN. TGMN. Anyway, it's interesting that uh, there's been other popcorn tins out there. And I've never picked any of this stuff up. But it's cool if you're into this kind of side collecting. And there it is. And it turns out that they officially announced the Transformers crossover with G.I. Joe at CinemaCon 24. And it was revealed during a Paramount presentation at the event. And Steven Spielberg, good old Spielberg, is going to be executive producing. It's going to pick up right where they left off from the end of The Rise of the Beast. And I hope I didn't spoil the end of The Rise of the Beast for anybody. But not much more known about it, just it's revealed officially. All right, so transitioning to some different news here. This is Macari. And they're adding fees to the buyer. So they're redistributing the fees. This is some news. I'm going to be making a video on the other channel about this. As I do a little bit more digging, there's more to it than just this. But if you go to buy something on Macari, they're going to be adding a service fee and a processing fee. So this $38 purchase that you would have expected to pay after tax and shipping $46 is actually going to cost you $51.78. And that's a shocker. And I actually don't think it's going to turn out well for Macari in the end. Buyers are going to be put off by this. But uh, I'm going to make a video talking about this. Because there's more stuff and it sounds good like sellers don't have to pay fees. But then they add other fees to the seller. And so there are some gives and takes with this whole situation. But if you go to buy on Macari, guess what? You're getting hit with some fees. Next, I got some updates for expected release dates from ramen toy i believe the ramen racer should be shipping now or soon or in the process of that and then with that i think the cag sets will be shipping pretty soon but uh, getting into these other ones we see in july we're going to be seeing the marshall so that's that's the marshall in july and i don't know why my screenshot went all squirrely like that but uh and then in august we're going to be seeing great white for the machina line and that's going to be pretty cool and then 80s commanders retro box reissue in december so all this stuff that i just mentioned is still available for pre-order at the moment if you're interested in this and just give you all a heads up next i want to talk about the target holothon and it seems like a lot of cool stuff that's coming out according to this drop one that should be coming is the three eastman and laird team and t classic color foot soldiers a Hello Kitty Astronaut 13 Plush, TMNT Cartoon Punk Disguise 4-Pack. Now, 
I don't know much about the Eastman Laird, and I think there's some Ronin stuff going on with that. I don't really get into all of that, but it's cool, and I like looking at it on the shelf, and I think I've seen pretty much all this stuff at Target's. But I'm really interested in this Punk Disguise 4-pack. Just, I'm not interested in a $150 price point. For whatever reason, I was hoping for $130, but yeah, it's $150. And then there's also a set of other turtles. And I'm not exactly sure what's going on with them, but they're not a set. They're separate, and there's like Michelangelo with a chef hat, and all of them have different accessories and stuff with them. But by far, I think this is the coolest set that we'll probably not see anything like this again from NECA. But I'm a bit turtled out, so spin at 150 is tough. But if you're interested in this stuff and you don't care about the price point of all, then just jump on it. And I think Targets are getting them now, hitting pretty hard, and they seem pretty easy to find. From what I've heard, across all of the other people that do the hunts, say they're finding them pretty easy. Now we've got to talk about this wreckage figure and tiger paw. And yeah, this kind of sucks. And it's almost like a viper moment it's almost like an sdcc zardan moment i i just got so used to being used and abused by gi joe classified that this even, didn't even phase me but it was irritating that as soon as i found out this thing was a thing they were already sold out i didn't know and obviously i should have been more in the know because i do make news videos and all that kind of stuff but i wasn't in the know on this thing but there's something good here but with the viper i was there ordering it and i wasn't allowed to order it and i wasn't allowed to have one the only way i bought one was i bought it in my friend's collection and he had six of them in it that's the only way i was able to get a viper then uh when sdcc zartan the only way i even see that in person is the fact that uh, a viewer david thanks again sent it to me but other than that like i would have had to resort to the secondary market for quadruple the price and with this guy I don't know. I'm not going to make any guarantees. But one thing that we do know is that the trouble bubble of the fly pod, that is easy to get, especially from Target. Target market was down to 26 bucks, So they might be doing us a favor, and hey, we didn't get the pre-order, so we can just wait for it to be 26 bucks. Or they've cut production now, and it's going to be hard to get. There's no telling. Plus, I believe this is probably more popular of an item than a fly pod or trouble bubble. Still, will be hard to tell until it's released but i bet it'll be relatively easy to get once it's released but i wouldn't be resorting to ebay well i'm not going to buy one on ebay so if i don't get one for the normal price or cheaper i'm just going to do without next up the vintage collection carbonized figures are on clearance at walmart walmart.com i guess uh it's showing them anywhere from see 489 to 689 depending on each character and i'm sure it depends on how many they have in stock but that's what they get for putting these up for crazy ridiculous prices to start anyway these carbonized always cost a little bit more but now they're on sale and that's pretty much ross ollie's prices it's not bad walmart's also mark so it's 1809 at walmart for this micro galaxy squadron evasive action battle pack and i'm starting to see a lot of these going on sale and clearance i do feel like they sell relatively well but they're probably hit and miss i haven't seen everything they made on sale but i probably will pick up the at, -AT on sale and definitely waiting for the imperial shuttle to go on sale stack me a few of those because it's pretty awesome this is a cool toy line and it makes a lot of sense now with space and money and all that kind of stuff to get the ships in this size and then collect figures whatever black series or vintage collection retro vintage itself kenner and that makes a lot of sense for space and that's why people like this so much so there's a Star Wars video game that's coming out, or they did the trailer for The Outlaws, and it looks pretty interesting, pretty cool. It is sort of set in the original trilogy era, but it's more like originally original trilogy adjacent, kind of things that would have been going on that you didn't see in the original trilogy, but it crossed paths, the game crosses paths with it, which is really what I thought they'd do a lot more of. When I first heard Disney would get the license, I thought that it would be... TV shows doing a lot more of this. They sort of did that with Mandalorian in a way. But still, this looks like a pretty interesting game. I'm not in on buying games right away. I'm more like waiting till I get a used copy two years later for real cheap. And then maybe check it out. But anyhow, if you're in on this, Outlaws. Then there's this fun picture. I kind of like how they're doing these. But this is the checklist 
from Mr. Stevie from Hasbro that updated this to 271 or something along those lines. So yeah, pretty cool that they did it. Uh, there's a lot more than just this, I think. Is this it? But anyhow, updating the checklist, it's interesting. I, I really do like the collect them all mentality and the checklist, but you know, when you're looking at 300 figures, I mean, that's, that's a lot. And lastly, we've got another episode of The Bad Batch, Season 3. This is Episode 12, The Juggernaut. And I've been watching this. I don't know. I enjoyed all of the previous seasons. So I imagine it's a pretty good season. It's pretty interesting. But I don't know. I don't have Disney+. Plus, and I'm not going to do whatever it takes to watch this, if you know what I mean. So I'm not going to mess with all that. And it, I'm just going to sit it out. I hear people like it. So good. All right, so let me know what you think about this week's weekly news in review. What else is going on out there? What do you guys think about all of the fun stuff going on this week? Fun? Maybe? Unfun? Like, subscribe. Tadir, hang around.